The reason for the travel is to explore the planet, uncover diverse cultures of other people, but most important, discover ourselves. This is Around the Globe. I left home when I was 16. At 18 years old, I got sent to a detention center. And uh, I was doing weights in there, and I quickly recognized, and so did the, the prison officers, and so did the other inmates, that I was stronger than everybody else, and had a better physique. When I used to read the magazines, you know, as a kid, I mean, my father died at 13, so I didn't really have any close role, role model. So these guys in the magazines almost became my surrogate uh, fathers or role models. I'm probably doing a total of um, maybe three and a half hours a week in the gym of actual weight training and some of my competitors are, are doing probably that much every day. Dorian Yates, six time Mr. Olympia, The Shadow. He is considered to be the Yoda of bodybuilding. I swear to God. And I got the privilege to go train with him. The shadow was uh, enigma, was like the opposite to most bodybuilders who seek the publicity and like the attention. Actually, I didn't like it, I liked to just train. And the only reason for me uh, to pop up was to win a competition once a year or so. So that's where the name The Shadow came from. Hello, nice to meet you. Start on here, but we're going to do one set of pull downs just to uh, warm up and to get the connection with the lats as well. Okay? okay, so a little bit before we start um, about the function of the lats. Of course, uh, everything you do in the gym, the form is important. Okay but on the back possibly more than anywhere else because it's behind you, you can't see it and it's connecting through the arms as well, through the biceps and also if you're not having the correct uh, position, the correct body mechanics you're not going to get a full contraction in the lats, yeah? It's very important when you get to the contracted position that you have a slight arch 
on your spine for the lats to contract properly. Yeah? So <clears throat> on this exercise, we've got three parts of the movement. So we've got the positive coming down. We've got the static because you've got tension in the static position. And then you've got the negative. And those are the phases uh, of the exercise of the different strengths. So you've got the positive, that's actually the weakest part of the movement. Then you've got the static, that's stronger. And then you've got the negative, which is the strongest. So a lot of people are missing a lot of the exercise because they're not holding the contraction and they're not slowing down the negative. Okay, so just as a kind of guide, if your positive is count of two, let's say it's one, two, should be count of one here and one, two, three on the way out. So the negative should always be uh, slower. So most people, they're just concerned with getting the weight down and then they're letting it go through the negative, yeah? So I want you to consciously slow down the negative and arch a little bit when you get that contracted position and then you should feel the contraction right down here with the lats because the lats are going from here all the way down here and most people don't hit the lats they're hitting the traps, they're hitting the rhomboids because they're not doing the exercise correctly. Okay, so we're going to do this to warm up but also to get the feeling that you get that contraction and then we're going to maintain that through the workout when it gets heavy. Yeah? So overhand. From here, down, contract, control on the way up. Squeeze here, control on the way out. Okay. That's it there. One. Three. Four. Okay. Right, we're gonna go all the way down. The big range of motion. Right to there. Okay. Push. Two. Good. Come on. All the way in. It's all yours. Five, it's all yours, yes. And again. Squeeze there. Come on, two more, it's all yours. Right. Get up a little bit more. What do you think would be the best rest period between the sets? Depends on the exercise. Bigger muscle groups, you're using more oxygen, so you need longer to recover between the sets. So I don't go like by the clock, 60 seconds or 90 seconds. Depends on the exercise, depends on how I see the client is, uh, is recovering. If you can talk normally and you, you know, so on, then it's probably time to go. The thing is, you've got to be able to take that set to muscular failure. If you're rushing too much and you're still breathing heavily from the previous set, then you're going to run out of cardiovascular. You're going to fail cardiovascularly rather than muscularly. So it's like a balance. And then you don't want to rest too long. If you rest too long, then you lose some intensity of the workout. So it's just when you feel that you're ready, you can give 100%. It's going to be much longer on like leg squats or leg press or, or a deadlift, something like that, than a bicep curl. So just go by how you're feeling. You look like you're ready to go now. Yeah? Okay? Okay, go. One. Push. Two. Easy. Three. And again. Four. Let's go. All the way in. Push, 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 push. That's yours. Let's go. Push. Number six. Squeeze it in. Squeeze it in. Two more. Come on, we got two more there. Power through the lats. Drive the elbows. Drive the elbows. Squeeze it in. Last one. Come on. Everything now. Everything you got. Everything in the lat. Push. Squeeze it in. Squeeze it in. Squeeze. Hold it there, hold it there, slowly. Coming up slowly. Good. Okay. That's failure. One set done perfectly to failure. We don't need to do any more than that. Move to another exercise. 
So we're going to do eight reps. Okay. Four. One. Two. One, two, three. Right, a little bit closer with your grip this time. A little bit. Okay, man. Let's see what you got here. Two. One. Two. Two. Three. Four. Strong. Come on. Oh. Pull with the lats now. Let's go. Oh. Two more. All the way. Come on. All the way down. Pull. Pull it down. Grind it. One more. One more. Come on. Power. Pull. Squeeze it in. Squeeze it in. Squeeze it in. Slowly. Okay, nice. Good set, man. Good set. That's the failure. <laughs> yeah. And we only did two exercises. We've got yeah. two more to do on the lats. We're going to move to uh, rowing now, barbell row. I, I think I never had this kind of pumping my lats and I've already done it. Consistently. Only done two exercises. But it's very targeted, it's very focused. Yeah. yeah. That's the idea. Most people, when they're pulling down, they're leaning back too much, they're using momentum, they don't have the correct uh, angle. So there's a lot to do with the form here that you're learning. All right, have a breather. I'm gonna set up the barbell. Okay, so we're gonna do barbell row. A Little bit different from the conventional. So I'm gonna lift it up. So the upper body is, is above parallel, I'm not parallel to the floor here. Coming up, so the bar is gonna be about by the knees and pull into the waist. And keep the upper body very still. A lot of people do this from the bottom and they do this to get the weight going, momentum. Again, we want to cut the momentum out. How about the legs? Can you bend a little bit if you get down you, you, Whatever you're going to do with your legs, have a slight bend on them, but then lock them there. So the whole body is locked. The legs, the back, everything. <coughs> We're just going from here to here, yeah? So when you pick the, any barbell from the floor, you want to have your shins near to the bar. You don't want to be Back here, picking it up, because you put it back in a vulnerable position. So here. So you can see legs are slightly bent. Once I get that position, I'm holding it, holding the legs, I'm holding the back. There's no body movement, there's no leg movement, nothing at all. Just into the waist and back down again. Yeah? So let's try this just to warm up. Should be pretty light for you. Medium grip. Yeah, like shoulder whip. Look in the mirror. Two. Three. Four. Five. That's it. Six. Now you got it. I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I'm still scared, <laughs> obviously, but I got a good pump, so it gives me some confidence, and I can really feel the exercise better once Dorian is helping me out. So this is definitely helping me with my bodybuilding, definitely. Not sure if it's gonna fit you. I'm a small guy. Okay. We got it. Okay, so bend the legs. Pick it up. The reason I'm telling you to keep your eyes in the mirror, yeah, is because if you got your head up, you will keep, you will keep the arch on the spine. If you put the, the head down, it starts to round around, yeah? So keep your head up and look in the mirror. <coughs> Come on, man. Yes. 
strong. Come on, you can do this. It's easy. One, two, three, good. Pull, four, pull, five, again. Six, two more. One more, eyes in the mirror. Pull. Yes, down. Nice, nice. Do some cable where we really so again, concentrate again, more on the. Just get it in there, yeah. Just get it in there, yeah. But it looked good the last, the last set. Yeah. Just remember uh, to keep. The elbows, and the switch go sideways, so it's just trying to pull. However, it feels natural. The, your, you should be pulling close to your body like this. Yeah. yeah not, not trying yeah. to come out here. Yeah. We're going to do that afterwards. So everything at the moment, close to the body. Close to the body, close to the body, because we're targeting the lats. When we come out more with the elbows, then it's going to go more to the mid traps and rhomboids and so on. So we'll finish with that. Make sure you keep that form tight, keep the legs tight, back tight. Once you get to this position, you're locked. You're not moving anything, just here. That's it, keep this up in the mirror. All right, man, let's do it. Solid. Tight position. Power back. Yeah. Pull. One. Pull. Two. Three. Tight. Four. Pull. Five. Again. Two more. Right up. Come on. Up. Try one more. Up. And down. Good. Good set. Six, four, one, and two. Two half reps. Good man. Good job. So we're done there. See how heavy you're breathing now? Because you're involving those the legs as well a little bit to stabilize the lower back, the lats, everything. So we do a combination of some free weight stuff like this and some machines that both have Advantages and disadvantages, so we use a little bit of both. These are um, heavy ass training. Yeah, these definitely call it high intensity. Quality or quantity, that's the key. So, medium grip. Legs slightly bent. You're gonna let the shoulder girdle go forward. Back and squeeze. So no need to totally collapse forward like this, yeah? Just let the shoulders go forward and back. And squeeze. Back and squeeze. One. Good. Two. Perfect. Three. I'm not here to set weightlifting records. You're here to take the muscle to failure in a six to ten rep range and focus as much uh, stress onto the working muscles as you can. So we're trying to minimize any kind of momentum, swinging and, and stuff like that. And of course, as the workout gets on, your lats are getting weaker and weaker because we really hit them, we really targeted them. Normally you probably don't feel this by the end of the workout where it's totally, totally fried. And that's why we're moving now a little bit more to the upper back, which is Normally people need more on the lats. If you look at bodybuilding competitions, you, you usually see the upper back is okay, but the lats are not developed because people don't target them properly. Now you know how to, to get in there and target the lats, uh, especially the lower lats. And now we're shifting a bit more, as I say, to the upper back. You got this one? Last one on here, man.
Okay, keep it exactly the same. If you need help, I'm going to help you a little bit just to get that last bit of a contraction. Okay? Okay, nice and tight, man. Last set on here. Make it work. Make it count. Boom. Two. Perfect. Like this. Three. Let's go. Come on. Four. It's all yours. Five. And again, right back. Four. Six. Two more. Oh, and one more. Oh, two half reps, two half reps. Come on, let's see it. Pull, and again, one more. Pull, okay, great, perfect. <coughs> That's how you should look after a good set. We're going to have a little rest now. What are we going to do? We're going to do one exercise for rear delt. Because everything we've been doing has been working, you know, we're pulling back. So we're working the rear delt. So it makes sense to do it today yeah. rather than do it with a shoulder day. Yeah. So we're going to do one exercise for rear delts. And then we're going to finish with some deadlifts, which is going to work the whole back and finish the whole back. And then you will be truly fucked, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> It looks fucked already. Yeah, I, I feel like I've been straight legs for an hour. Yeah. But it's only back and five exercises. So. Yeah, what we did, three sets of pull over, two sets of pull down, three sets of rows, and two sets of rows. So we've done 10 sets yeah. all, all together, including warm ups. And that's all we need to do. We're gonna move a little bit now. One exercise for rear delts and deadlifts, which just finishes everything off, it works the whole back together. And doing deadlifts at the end of the back workout, uh, you're not gonna use so much weight, so it's safer, yeah. and we're gonna do it so it targets the, yeah. the back rather than using the legs too much. I've always had deadlifts in the hands, that's a nice exercise. Yeah, the it's the best way to do it. Yeah, of course like you can use more weight if you do it first, but as a bodybuilder, you, it's all about how much stress you're putting on the muscle, not necessarily how much weight you're lifting. We can do dumbbells or we can do machine. I'll do machine today because uh, you've been doing a lot bent over. So, so give your back a little bit of rest while we do this. So back, and squeeze, uh, 10 reps with this to warm up and then we see, see what you can do for the second set, yeah? Yeah. In there, man. Squeeze, one, good, two, Three, four, five, six, in there, come on, seven, still breathing heavy, huh? Yeah, but it's getting better. Yeah. That's what happens when you go to full failure. Okay, you ready? Let's hit this man, last set on here. As many as you can, let's see. In there, come on, squeeze, one, easy, two, right back, three, good, four, it's all yours, we got this, come on, five, right back, six, and again. Seven, push. Let's go, one more. Squeeze back, squeeze, 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 squeeze. And slow. One more. Push. Squeeze it back, squeeze it back, squeeze it back. And slowly in. Bam. Well, slow as you can. Good job, man. One more exercise to do now, you're finished for today. Okay? Yeah. We're gonna do some deadlifts. A couple of sets.
head up. Two, one. Two, two. Powerful, man. Come on. Three, the last set. Two, four, strong. Two, one more, one more. Come on. Two, still got one more. Still got it. Power. Last one, this one, last one. Everything you've got. Come on. And pull. And down. Perfect, man. Perfect. Good job. That's how you should look at the end of a back workout. <laughs> Yeah, you can get a picture of us. Picking up a lot during the workout. A lot to do with the, the technique and the form. It's not just about throwing around heavy weights. Yeah. People get the uh, misconception, I think, with my training that it's all about heavy weights. No, 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 no. We use, yeah. we use the weights as a tool. So yeah, the weights is important. We increase when we can, but within the confines of doing it exactly uh, the exercise correctly and putting as much stress on the muscle as we can and uh, what we did like 45 yeah. 50 minutes yeah. and uh, you don't want to do any more i realized that just with the small figures with my elbows and arms and with grip um, there was a huge impact how i felt the exercise all the little things add yeah. up at the end of the day yeah it mattered a lot more than the weight at the end exactly um, i was to be honest i was scared Back in my hotel about this workout, I was actually like shaking a little bit, my voice was cracking. But now, since I got the pump, I got the good feeling about the workout, I will calm down, you know, yeah, I got really focused. Tomorrow is uh, delts and triceps, so it's not, uh, it's not as tough as this yeah. one. The, la the toughest one, of course, will be yeah, exactly. the last one on Friday. That's why we do it on the last day, so you have the weekend to rest after that. So, good job, man. If a person trains by himself and he doesn't have a training partner and yeah. he can't do four reps, yeah. what do you recommend for this person to do like drop sets or rest pause or how do you go through a failure if you're by yourself? Yeah, you can go to failure um, and then, I mean some exercises you need somebody there anyway just for safety, about bench press or maybe a leg press or something like that, where you can get stuck with the weight. You need somebody there anyway, just for safety reasons. Um, <clears throat> but if you can't, uh, the other exercises, you can go to failure. And uh, occasionally, I would use those techniques, like a drop set or a rest pause. So <clears throat> let's say you can do five or six reps, put the weight down, the rest 10 seconds and then you, you go again, maybe you get maybe two more or something like that. So that's a way of doing it. And then a drop set, again six to eight reps and then dropping the weight and trying to get another six to eight reps. So that's a way to increase the intensity. But <clears throat> mostly you're just going to failure. As you train with me today, you can see, okay, I'm helping you a little bit on the last couple of reps, but it's really more the last the weak point to get the contraction. Yeah. I'm not, uh, you know, lifting the weight for you or something like that. So people get the wrong idea about force reps that they're not doing enough reps on their own, and then they're getting somebody to help them with three or four reps or something like that. You should be doing the exercise yourself, and the force rep is just to get through the weak point of the movement on the last two reps, maybe. And of course, we're slowing down the negative on every rep. So we're getting much more out of the exercise. And most people are just moving through the negative quite quickly, so they're not benefiting from that. They're not, <clears throat> they could go to failure like, okay, you're doing a bench press, I'm going to failure, I can't do any more. On a positive, but you still have a lot left on the negative. So in order to tax the negative, always slow the negative down. That's why I was telling you to slow the negative down. Do the negative more slowly than the positive. 
That's the rule. That way you're going to get more out of the exercise because you're going to exhaust the positive, the static, and the negative. So <clears throat> you don't need a lot of force reps if you're doing that properly. So control the negative, um, do the exercise to failure with good form as we're doing today. You see how much difference it makes. Just body position, controlling the weights, slowing down the negative, all these things are making the exercise more intense. The mental side, I realized, like, I really focused, like, the last 10 seconds before I started the um, set, yeah. I just get my mind into it, so I can really focus on the main thing. So I'm not just, like, talking to my friend and then start doing difficult set. Well, you you should be getting your mind right, first of all, before you even go to the gym. It's like, you've already visualized what that you want to do that day. You should look, this is what I did last week, <clears throat> and I want to improve on this. If it's one kilo in the weight, or one rep, or something, try to beat the last workout. So you have this in your mind when you go into the gym. So you already know what you're going to do, what order of exercise, what you're going to do, what your goals are. And then you take a few seconds, as you say, maybe 10 seconds before the set, to, <clears throat> okay, confirm that what I'm going to do, get the mind right. And, uh, you only give out physically what you're prepared for mentally. Right. So if you're going in there uh, casual and you're talking to your friend, you're, you're not fully uh, focused, you're not fully committed. Right. But if you're saying to yourself, before you go to the gym, <coughs> I got this to do, this is my goal and this is very important to me and this is why, because I want to build the physique or whatever it is you want. And um, you have this in mind and uh, the fact that it's temporarily uncomfortable to go to failure or push to the to your limit it's uncomfortable but it's only for a short time it's for a minute and your goal is greater than you know right, right. wanting to not be uncomfortable right so that you go through it so you have to know what your goal is and you have to know how important that is otherwise you won't push through that uh, sticking point so whatever you need to motivate yourself uh, to do that this is one of the reasons why you had the training book with you right you had, Absolutely. The, you had the diary so you knew what you did last time and we had to do a progress you know, you know one kilo or one set or yeah or and uh, if I did some change to my training uh, okay, I'm going to train more frequently now, or less frequently, or, or something. <coughs> I could make that change, and I could do it for a few weeks, and I could see what effect that change had. Yeah. The same thing we were talking about getting ready for a contest, and the fact that I over-dieted a few times. Uh, how did I know that? Because I had the record, I could right. look back, I had pictures every week, I had weight, I had all these statistics every week that I could look back and say, hey, you know what? Well, six weeks before the contest, I was already in shape. And then what happened? I was just losing muscle size the last six weeks. So, so you look back on the diary, what went wrong? What went wrong and yeah. avoid that the next time. And then you get, uh, you refine your, your system of training or getting ready for a contest or whatever it is, having all that feedback. If you're just going in the gym and just guessing and uh, this is the biggest nonsense, go by your feelings. I said something once, that was they put it in the magazines back then because they used to have this instinctive principle. I said, What do you think about the instinctive principle? And I said, I think it's bullshit. Instinctive. If I follow my instincts, I'm down the pub and I'm chasing women. That's my instinct. <laughs> not to get under a four or five hundred pound squat and go until I feel like I'm puking. It's not my instinct. And I'm doing it for a reason because I have a goal and a goal is greater than the discomfort that I have to go through. It's simple as that. It's been now like six months. It's kind of like um, your comfort zone, right? So yeah. if, you're, if you, when you go through failure and over your comfort zone, you go over your instincts because your body saying stop, 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 you, but you have to keep going. Exactly. So you have to have a reason to keep going. Right. You have to have a, a motivation, whatever that is. Uh, you can imagine different things in your mind, whatever works for you. I used to I used to call it fuck you motivation, <laughs> like fuck you to everybody, yeah, everybody who thought I can't do this. Or that I used to like to use this motivation, like I'm gonna show everybody. You know, everybody that thinks I can't do this, this is for you. Yeah. I'm gonna show you. So 
I use that motivation. It, it depends, you know, different little tricks, whatever works for you. But you, you have to know why you're there and what you're going to do that day. Yeah. Uh, it was a journalist, bodybuilding journalist from UK called Peter McGough working for a small magazine, I can't remember the name of it at the time, but um, so it's a funny story because Peter gave me the name The Shadow very early on uh, when I was competing in Britain and he was a journalist and later on he went to be the editor of Flex magazine and Muscle and Fitness for WIDA and I went to be Mr. Olympia so uh, he's the only person apart from my ex-wife that went to every contest that I competed in. Um, so he called me the shadow because uh, he saw that I was unlike the other bodybuilders who kind of craved the attention and like, you know, to seek the attention where I just came to compete and then disappear and nobody saw anything about me or knew anything about me. Of course, no the internet and no social media. So I would just disappear and uh, then reappear so it was like a shadow, um, which is funny because I had a horse when I was a kid called the shadow. So it was strange when I saw myself full of the shadow. Uh, so yeah, that's the story.